Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logical Nonsense Podcast. It is a great day, folks. NFL is back. Week one has finished. It is the greatest time of the year for this show. You might as well subscribe. We're on the road to 1,000. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. This is the best podcast to be subscribed to for the NFL season because we get the best takes from Hunter Schuler and some mediocre. No, I'm just kidding. But no, it, it's a great show. Um, I'm super excited to be back with these boys talking NFL every week. Um, for those of you who are new for our NFL segments, we do something here called Rate the Games, where we go through and we rate the games on a scale of grab your popcorn, mid Terranian Sea, or shit show. So, starting with what we just saw. The Niners got it done with no CMC. Um, we heard a lot of talk in the offseason that Aaron Rodgers was going to come back from this Achilles. Looked great. Tonight he looked okay. The Jets have some other issues on this team. But I will say this. They're playing probably one of the best teams in the league. So we got we got, we to gotta give them some sort of, um, I don't know, benefit of the doubt, if you will. So. Let's start with rating the game. We'll give this one Mediterranean C. It was just, you knew it was going to be a defensive battle going into it to top tier defenses. And the Niners looked the part. They played fast, physical, you know, fumble right away, really limited what Rodgers could do. Really, the only play Rodgers made was that first drive and then that touchdown on the offsides in yeah. the third quarter. Uh, the Jets, a little bit concerned for me, was their run defense. Like we Fact. said, no no the CMC defense. and Mason. He came in and he yeah. ran the ball amazing. Yeah. I don't want to discredit the guys. This is opportunity, but there was a lot of holes in that Jets front four. Oh, the Niners' line was pushing them around. Yeah. Cause of concern, the pass defense, especially their zone, was kind of iffy at times. Yeah, but I mean, I still don't think you panic here if you're the Jets. You're playing best team in the NFL, arguably top three. Yep. So yep. You, know, you just put this one behind you. Rogers made it through the game. You're happy with that. You figure yeah. some things out, but it was just overall, it's just kind of a mid game. Niners controlled it throughout. You, totally. Totally. And I we will get to it in a second, but I'm, I'm interested to hear your guys' take on taking Rogers out, but Dodge, what, what's your rating of the game? Uh, mid terrain. See, you don't worry if you're the Jets in this game. The Niners are supposed to be the best team in the league right now. I think they are the best team in the league right now. And while they're missing arguably the best player in the league, it's not even CMC that makes the run game so good for the Niners, right? We yeah. know that it's the O-line. We know that it's the scheme. And yep. you know what? The, the running back for the Niners – it doesn't matter a whole lot. CMC brings like a whole new level yeah, definitely. to it, but you can get a good run game from an average running back on if you're the 49ers. Yep. And that's what they did. They got they got solid run game. Nothing crazy, right? I mean, average, average 4.7 yards per rush. So nothing like mind-blowing, but um, yeah. solid, good gains. And obviously, Rodgers – Played first time in a year. You know, um, I wouldn't say he looked rusty. I would just say that, you know, he looked, eh. Yeah. You know, not incredible. There were some classic Rogers, like the offsides, right? Yeah. That's just classic him. And yeah, I mean, Purdy plain clean, like we always say. So, yeah. Mid game. Honestly, if you think about it, with the Jets scoring at the very end there and kind of making the score a little closer than the game was. True. To True. be the only down 13 and lose the turnover battle to, by two, it's not horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, to me, this team looked like there was still a lot to figure out, both on offense and defense. Um, and I think – this is where people kind of question, like, why isn't Rodgers playing preseason games, right? Because, like, this is the type of shit that can get not totally figured out in preseason, but somewhat. I, I think a common theme in this week that we're probably going to talk about a lot is just how sloppy the football was this week. And I think people always forget that with week one, how many turnovers there are, how many lapses there are, both on offense and defense. 
And the Jets, like, they didn't look terrible, but you could definitely just tell there was just some chemistry that was off. Um, usually, you know, Jets previous two or three years have had a solid defense. Like, they've got guys on that team, CJ Mosley, Sauce Gardner, Quinn and Williams, right? Like, they have studs. It just felt like they weren't able to put it all together. So I'll be curious going forward. I don't think they press the panic button yet. Um but I think there's still some things to figure out. It's just tough because immediately, like we've been talking about, they play the 49ers off the jump. So what, what do you guys think about um, taking Rodgers out of the end of the game? Smart move or stupid move? Uh, neither smart nor stupid. Um, I don't like it. I would have given them that last drive. Yeah. Um, just because technically the game – in my opinion, like it was over pretty much, but it wasn't over, over. Like it wasn't like time that, oh, the Niners can throw in the backups and they're still going to yeah. easily win. You know, you got four minutes. Let's put together one last drive, see if we can't get this game back within two. We have two timeouts. Let's get a stop. Let's score again. See if we don't get it onside. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And that's the path to victory as a small path. But yeah. until that's gone, I would say, you know, your starter should be playing. Totally. Totally. Yep. Anything agree. else on this game? No. All right. We'll go to last night, Sunday night football Rams versus lions. Kind of an interesting one. Really? The Rams had no business being in this game, especially after they're down 17, three at half. Somehow Maddie Stafford. I try to warn you guys. Maddie Stafford is a force to be reckoned with. You, you give him the ball and he can, he can force a comeback in any time. Um, and that's kind of what happened. They The O-line looked terrible for the Rams. Yeah, let's rate the game. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rate this game. Grab your popcorn just because I went okay. to OT. Um, I was debating Mediterranean just because it wasn't like, you know, it was one way and then the other. Yeah. Um, but no, I'll give it grab your popcorn. <laughs> Obviously, overtime game. We saw some... Matt Stafford gunslinging, you know, plays where yep. he throws the ball 49 times. Yep. Uh, <laughs> throws yeah. a touchdown, throws a pick, right? Um, and 317 yards. Yeah. And um, no, I mean, it was a good game to watch. So, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll say grab your popcorn. Yeah, I'll agree. With Dodge on this, I also was debating mid training C, but kind of a weird the, game. The rest of the yeah. week that we saw, I think it's more on the edge of your <laughs> popcorn than Max. what we've seen. So I'll give it Very that. True. And it was just an interesting game because the way the Lions played this game, it was one drive with uh, Jameer Gibbs as the prime back, and then the next one with Montgomery. Yeah, kind of were just alternating. It was like a power series and then a quick speedy one yeah and shout out to williams amon Ra didn't have a good yeah. game jameson and williams jameson williams didn't scary but, but yeah night. he looked he was fast out yeah. there. he looked good so no you know that's good for the lions that you can count on someone else when amon Ra, you know can't get it going yep very well and it sucked to see nakua go out with that mm -hmm. knee injury thankfully it's not too serious it's like four weeks for yeah. him but cooper cup it was nice to see back Yep. Uh, Stafford's favorite target. Yep. Kieran Williams continued to impress. Yeah. Running back. It, it was a solid game. Overtime games are fun. I wish the Rams would have got a chance to have the ball, but yeah. Lions just forced it right down oh the my middle. God. Their throat and OT just oh my rock. God, dude, that was Montgomery. terrible. Montgomery looks like yeah. a Mack truck out of nowhere. Like it well, was let's... unstoppable. They just kept feeding him. Like he over, is kind of a Mack truck. Again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like Montgomery's tough to bring down. He's always been tough to bring down. I think he's underrated too. Like I'll yeah. say it, he like he doesn't like everyone always talks about Jimmy Gibbs, and I get it. Like he's a flashy guy. He's a more fun guy to watch. But David Montgomery's got that fundamental running back that I I fucking love it, dude. Like he is, he's a solid back to me. He's a workhorse. Yeah, yeah. What were we gonna say? So, sir? I was gonna say the one thing that like I wanted to bring up that I forgot to was that. No, you, Back to the Matt Stafford producing a Matt Stafford type game. Targets Cooper Cup his favorite target twenty one yeah. times. I mean yeah. that's throwback to Calvin Johnson. Throwback yeah. to you know Cooper Cup. Throwback you know just 
whoever his number one receiver is, he loves getting him the ball. And yeah. Yeah. Classic. I think Matt Stafford is like Sean McVay's like dream QB though. Like if you think about Sean McVay's offense, like throwing it 49 times, like o- uh, only Matt Stafford would be like fucking thrilled about that. Like imagine if you put Daniel Jones in that position, he'd be, he'd be like crying. <laughs> like coach, I'm going to throw four. Yeah. 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 No, I'll go. Uh, I'll say everyone's scared of it. I'll go Mediterranean. I think it was like, it was a good game, but it was a weird game. Like, it was one of those games where I feel like I could go to the bathroom, come back, and not much had changed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I didn't yeah. miss much. There wasn't, like, a ton of, like, huge plays, like, you know, every once in a while. But, like, I think the two fun players to watch in this game, Jamison Williams and um, David Montgomery at the end there. Um, I, I'm i curious how the Rams will do this year. I, I think they're a frisky team. But the Lions, to me... I don't know. Some people are saying, "Oh, that this this shows they're still in Super Bowl contention." I don't. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I remember when we were doing the uh, the over over under yeah. not too long ago, and uh, saying that the Seahawks might might end up better than the Rams this season. You said that. I know. I said that. <laughs> yeah. Got a lot of hate for it too <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> Only time will tell. You played the Broncos. They played the Lions. So I want to get too excited there, Buck. Speaking of Bucks, let's go to Commanders versus Bucks. My guy, Baker Mayfield. Woo! Woo! What a performance. My goodness. Bringing us back. I think Baker just continues to say fuck you to the rest of the league, mm-hmm. especially the Browns. Mm-hmm. The Browns are shooting themselves Real in the dope. foot right now after that performance from Deshaun Watson, which we'll get to later. But, whoo! I know it's Commanders. But what do you guys think? Rate the game. I'll give this Mediterranean C because, it, well, it did feel like the Bucks were in control. The Bucks were fun to watch in this yeah. game. Like we said, Baker slinging it four tutties. He probably, he, I think he had the best quarterback performance in all of week one. Yeah. You could say everyone else was under 200 yards. He almost had 300. Yeah. Uh, you know, the run game looked good. Mike Evans looked really good. Yeah. Godwin, it was just an offensive performance. And for the commanders, you know, they're figuring it out. New coach, a lot of new yeah. defensive players, new quarterback. Daniels looked pretty solid, two rushing touchdowns, but he also puts himself on the line for a lot of big hits. Yeah. So that's kind of something to look forward to. But like I said, Bucks in control. It wasn't like a shit show because the Bucks played so good, but it's just, just yeah. a mid-game overall. Totally. Yeah, I would go Mediterranean C as well for this game. Like we said, watching Baker play like that, just, you know, it just feels something down deep, you know, for all the all the players that are yeah. like a, maybe underlooked or overlooked. Um, yeah. You know, he, he's that guy. And yeah. he continually shows that he deserves to be a quarterback in this league and not only a quarterback in this league, but that on his day, He's really good. He can compete you know? with anyone, yeah. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. And, you know, this, this had a lot of interesting appeal to it with, you know, the rookies in this game. And, like, Bucky Irving, I was looking forward to watching. Jalen McMillan, I was looking forward to watching. I was looking forward to see how the commanders were going to use Daniels, Robinson Jr., and Eckler, right? Yeah. Um. Luke McCaffrey, another one I was looking forward to. So it I had some I had some eyes that I wanted to see on this game. Yep. And Robinson Jr. got way more work than I expected. I was not I thought Eckler was going to be the lead back. Yeah. And Eckler was the lead back when it came to receiving, right? But yeah. You know, when it came to rushing, it was 12 to 2. Yeah. Daniels looked great on the ground, 16 carries, 88 yards, two touchdowns, yeah. right? Um, but we knew he had that in his bag. Again, the question remains, he's not a particularly mm-hmm. large guy. Um, how often can he do that? But who knows, right? Lamar stays healthy for at least 14 games a season. Um, we'll see about playoffs, you know. But the commanders aren't there right now anyway. They don't have yeah. the defense to compete like that. They, they don't have the talent. They got rid of that. Yeah. So – Honestly, I thought the commanders played pretty well for 
what they were up against and it's their first game they didn't look terrible yeah what i'll say though about the commanders and Jaden daniels there's a lot of like their good stats came when it didn't matter anymore like i'm not trying to discredit it but it like it almost like felt like you know like when you're at the game and you're getting beat like by a shit ton so you're just like you're slinging the ball around you know you're comfortable you know it's loose because it doesn't fucking matter anymore you're gonna lose so I don't want to discredit it because, like, obviously guys are still playing hard. Like, it's the NFL. Like, they're going to play hard till the end. But it just – it didn't feel as significant to me. I will say this. I do think Jaden Daniels probably had the best rookie QB performance out of all the rookies um, this Sunday. I So, I'll give him that. But, um, yeah, no, shout out, Baker. I think this is a solid Mediterranean game. Um, next, we're going to go to – Mr. Caden's Cowboys versus the Browns. This is a shit show, man. The Browns. My God, that O-line was hurt, and it was shown. Deshaun Watson looked like shit, like absolute dog shit. The The Browns might have to pull a Broncos. They might have to be paying somebody else to be their quarterback because that's the only way out of this. It's atrocious. Like, I'd rather have 30-30 season. With Jameis Winston right now, like oh, that, yeah. it, maybe. What's up? I you you threw me thirty thirty seasons not good. <laughs> it's uh, not good, but it's better than it's what better than happen. one and two. No. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. So I I, I wouldn't uh, do that. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think Jameis might be coming in soon. <laughs> they they did better with Flacco, man. They do better yep. with the backups. Put them in there. Have him fake Neil. I want to see that. <laughs> oh, no. That's what I was going to say. Weird how they had a guy named Flacco who played pretty solid to end yeah. the season for them last year, and they just let him go to the Colts. Yeah. But I think it's Jameis' time. That was putrid performance from Deshaun Watson. And I don't know if you Shout guys saw Cowboys today. Defense, though. Yeah, they look, they look defense. solid. Eric Kendricks, great. Yep. Our only pickup, awesome pickup. Interception, <laughs> two sacks. <laughs> but... Yeah, uh, Deshaun Watson, another uh, case got brought up today from 2020. If you didn't yeah, hear that. about that, so that. good for that guy. I was like, mm, what a the guy. Brown's day couldn't get any yeah, fucking worse. A, but <laughs> I'm with you. I'll rate this a shit show as well. That was just horrible. Maybe, you know, Nick Chubb is needed, obviously. Ford didn't get it going. Got a late touchdown at the end. Or a line couldn't block pass or run Poor game. Shit. Amari Cooper had a couple big drops, like when they finally did have a little bit of momentum yep. in that second half but the cowboys didn't look too great either but they didn't need to play great yep. they're good field position they got a couple touchdowns and it's nice when you just have to get the ball over midfield and you get a guaranteed three points because brandon aubrey is that guy yeah one thing that pissed me off was mike mccarthy continues to have shitty time management yeah you have, you have two timeouts why not use one before halftime and he made that 66 yarder they should have taken the 71 attempt. But, yeah. you know, going to the game, I was nervous, but solid win for the Cowboys. So yeah. we'll, we'll take it. But Brown's got to do figure something out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's time for the Jameis show. Um, look, Watson is obviously not going to be the Deshaun Watson from the Texans. Like, that's not him anymore. You can't do that. And this team just needs to go back to the running game. But – you know, they were stuffed by the Cowboys. You know, it just wasn't going to work out. And the Browns aren't a great team this season. They're going to be tough because I think their defense is okay. But yeah. honestly, the, the Cowboys actually played pretty solid against their, uh, you know, they put up 30, 33. Yeah. So that's not a great look for the Browns defense. Um, yeah. But honestly, like the Cowboys didn't play great either. So. You can look at you can look at it both ways for the Cowboys. Sorry, I, did I rate this game a shit show? Um, uh, no, you haven't rated it, but that's where I figured show. you were going. So it could go either way for the Cowboys. You could look at it and say, "Well, we beat the Browns 33-17. Yeah. We didn't play well, and it that looks great for the rest of the season." Or you could look at it and say, "Hmm, we didn't play well, right?" Yeah. So we'll see. Dak looked fine. He got a bag. I don't know if we, mm -hmm. right, four years, yeah. 240, Fuck. right, 60 yeah. mil a year. Wow. Oof. It's funny, too, because I remember there's there's multiple people who thought they're going to 
sell all their assets. Dak is mm-hmm. going to be gone. CD is going to be gone by the mid of the year. Mike nope. McCarthy was going to be gone. It's like, guys, you don't know the Cowboys. They hold on to players. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. We'll see how that comes around playoff time. All right, moving to our next game. Got the Raiders versus the Chargers, everyone's favorite game of the week. Um, I'm going mid-terranean on this one. This was a very slow start to the game. I believe it, yeah, it was 7-6 at half. 7-6 half, you know, sometimes that's fun, but it wasn't, if you were wondering. There was a lot of turnovers, Gardner Minshew strip sack, Zamir White fumble. There was just, and then Gardner's interception was awful too. Um, I don't really know where that was going. There was just some not great football plays in this game. Um, I will give J.K. Dobbins this. Like fourth quarter came and he just tired. I, I don't know if he tired out that defense or what, but he opened it up and floodgate came in. He was looking like Ohio State J.K. Dobbins. It was fun to watch, but. Shout out Jim Harbaugh gets his first win with the Chargers, and uh, I think you yeah, move on from there. Not much to talk about with this game. Uh, I guess I'll go. Yeah, so I'm gonna rate this game. I'm gonna rate it a shit show. And, That's fair. I don't you know, blame you. It has nothing to do with the fact that it was like the worst game in the world. It just has to do with like not a lot was going on. No. Um, there was three turnovers by the Raiders, but the Chargers only won by 12. Yep. That ugly. Um, it was just an ugly game. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't like, it wasn't the worst game ever, but it it just was not, was not it. You know, I think this is going to be more of a hurt or a Harbaugh type win. Um, right. Where we see, you know, they win games. Yeah. They win games. The running to pass is about 50-50. Yep. We're not going to see Herbert put up the the 400-yard games, the 300-yard games, probably very much. Yeah. You know, he's just 17-26, 144 and a touchdown. Interested to see the J.K. Dobbins show. If he can stay healthy. Yeah, because that's a, uh, that's a reunion, I believe, with Harbaugh and Dobbins back from Ohio State. Oh wait, no, Harbaugh Michigan. <laughs> Harbaugh does oh. not like J.K. Dobbins back in the day. Uh, J.K. Dobbins it's, put it's up a, like 210 on that man's head. It's a reunion. Just I don't know why. Anyway, it's a, it's a reunion, the opposite reunion. Um, but he knows what he can do. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the Chargers. I think they'll actually win more games than. Like people think, just because Harbaugh yeah. wins games, that's what he does. He yeah. did it at Michigan. He did it at the Niners. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. this is him. Yeah, yep. I'm with Dodge. I think it was a shit show. I think this is Harbaugh's identity, and this is what we're gonna see all year from him. And he's got two good backs too, which is helpful. I think they have a mm-hmm. solid backfield. But when the most exciting part of this game was a fist fight out of the back of the end zone, <laughs> then. That's why I think it's a shit show with that. I mean, a couple of ejections. Yeah. Classic Raiders, right? Is good. Yeah. But yeah, overall, we'll just, I think, need to see a couple more weeks out of both these teams to really get a gauge on where they're at. Yeah. Lad McConkey had a solid rookie debut. Yeah. Yeah. So did uh, Joe Alt. Didn't yeah. allow one pressure from Crosby all game. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Here we go. To our next favorite game. Uh Uh-oh. Sam Darnold's show, folks. (laughs) Hop on. Woo! Vikings-Giants. Read the game. This is uh, another shit show for me because Giants offense is just (laughs) terrible. 90 million to a quarterback that's thrown more touchdowns to the other team than his own. And then you let Saquon walk. This is what you deserve. I'm and they sorry. Made HBO Max. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two. Yeah, they, they leaked their draft board on HBO Max. Is this franchise? You know, two years ago, we thought they're on the up and up, right? Jan, yeah. jo- Daniel Jones had a good season. Saquon played solid, and now it's just run into the ground, getting smoked twenty-eight to six by a Vikings team with a backup quarterback. 
But Sam Darnold, credit, he looked good. He completed he his first, like, what, 12 good. passes or something crazy. Yeah. It was solid. And he, you know, a little bit prove it for him. So it was good to see that. But it was just a dominating game for the Vikings. Pretty boring. Giants are terrible. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, shit show. Giants are awful. Um, it's time to end the Daniel Jones show. I was I was in favor of letting Jones start again this season after the terrible season last year just because you paid him so much money, you almost have to ride with it, right? And you can't deal with that. No. You, you just, no. Around 50% completion percentage, 42 passes, 4.4 yards a pass, two picks. I, you know, he got sacked five times, yeah. so, you know, it, he only had six carries for 15 yards. The running game couldn't get going. And honestly, the receiving core is not bad. The receiving core has never been that bad. I mean, yeah. they've always been kind of like below average with, yeah. they have actually okay guys, but there there's no star on that receiving core. Yeah. Right. And now they have neighbors. They had Wandale. They've had Slayton, right? Yeah. Um, and actually, I like those three. Those three could be a decent receiving core. Singletary's not a bad back, right? But I'm, I keep saying this about their team. It's like not terrible, not bad. Their offense, I think. Not a recipe for success. But it's Jones, and I think it's their offensive coordinator, and I think both of them need to go. No, this was an absolute fucking shit show. Um, that Andrew Van Ginkle pick six was ridiculous. That like should not happen. Like that's like high school pick six. Like that's a screenplay should not be pick six like that. Like that's don't throw it. Fucking keep it. Like make your read. Like you're a fucking NFL quarterback. Make your read. Like Jesus Christ, dude. Um. God, and they just, the worst part about this all was they're wearing their stupid fucking old school jerseys on top of it. So they just looked stupid while also looking stupid. Like, it was awful. The Vikings defense looked so great. Sam Darnold looked like a god out there. 12 for 12 or 13 for 13 to start the game. Oh, my Lord. I mean, I forget how much weapons the Vikings had. Or have, I should say. Like, present tense. Like, they have weapons. Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson. I know Hawkinson didn't play, but yeah. Aaron Jones. Mm-hmm. Like so, this team is built to win. Like, but this isn't, on this isn't this isn't Sam Darnold, right? Like, I I don't want us to think like, oh, suddenly Sam Darnold, and the only reason Kirk Cousins look good is because of all these guys. Sam Darnold's getting propped up at the moment, um, and but Sam he Darnold, looked good. Okay, because he's had weapons in the past and he didn't. He looked good. I'm telling you, Dodge. I'm telling you, he looked good good yesterday. He looked good for a few games on the Panthers too. Okay, you know, like I, I remember. I I'm not sold on Darnold. You can't. We don't have to be sold on Darnold, but give the man his props. Have you ever seen Darnold go twelve for twelve? No. I've seen him have stretches where he plays good. (laughs) Give the man his props. I, I did not believe Darnold was ever capable of a game like this. <laughs> Shit show. We'll go to Saints versus Panthers, which is really oh. Panthers. another Shit show. Do we have to talk yeah. about this? Uh, not much. Bryce Young. One thing I want to point out: first pass intercepted. Like <laughs> you, you got all these people to come in to make him develop. You know, this off season, his first pass gets intercepted, and. Oh, but he didn't need to do workouts before the the draft or anything. He's that guy, CJ Stroud. He did workouts. Anthony Richardson. He did workouts. And look where we're at. I, Panthers defense might have looked worse than their offense. Derek Carr was dotting them up. His shitty game. Panthers might Panthers have, have the worst team pick this year. Yeah. Panthers are bad. Shit show. Yeah. Uh, nothing else to say about it. Bryce Young. The experiment might be over. <laughs> Awful. Just. Awful. Uh, Derek Carr, I mean, the Panthers look that bad that Derek Carr is like MVP yeah. candidate. Um, yeah. <laughs> of week one, right? Of week one, mm-hmm. I should put that in there. Mm-hmm. You know, and the, the receiving core for the Panthers is not also similar to the Giants, is not horrible. 
you know, they have Thielen, Mingo, Leggett, Deontay. I actually really do like Leggett. You know, if we look back at the draft podcast, he is one of the guys that I would, I said, look out for out of South Carolina. Four catches, 35 yards, seven targets. But so he, I thought Leggett looked good. Um, but the Panthers suck. They're awful. They might be worse than they were last year. So I think they are. I think they are. And that's all that needs to be said. I'm moving on. Yeah. Maybe another shit show. I don't know. I guess we'll see what you guys rate it. Jags, Dolphins. I thought the Jags were going to pull this off up 17 to seven at half and actually had a chance to go up 24 to 10, I believe. And until ETN fumbles at like the one yard line. Um, so that sucked for the Jags, but it's in classic Jags fashion. So, um, yeah. What do you guys rate this? Give this mid training. See, I think. I think it's better than what we saw from some of the other games. And the Jacks came out and they looked really good. Like they always do, you know, came out hot start. Dolphins looked a little shaky. Weren't able to get it going. Their their run game was Dolphins run game was getting shut down to start that. Yeah. And and then (laughs) ETN fumble just completely changed the game. And it was all Dolphins from there. That was, that was a really good play on that Tyreek 80 yard. They faked like the RPO. Yeah quick yeah, screen and then play. hit him deep yeah. and then you know broke the cuffs after the yeah. tutty that was sick i love it <laughs> but i don't think both teams look too dominant overall it's just kind yeah. of just a mid game we'll see where they go from there hopefully you know i was hoping the jags and lawrence were going to get this out of their system where they start hot and then finish not good but looks like we're gonna get the same kind of jags that we saw last year yeah i'll, I'll go mid i'll go mediterranean too i think etn had it had Flashes where he looks great. I think they're again flashes where Trevor Lawrence looked great, but then in classic Jags fashion, they pissed it down their leg um, to go unanswered, like not even score in the second half at all. Like that's bad. Like you guys have so many weapons on your team. Like there's no excuse for that. And the Dolphins really turned it on. Um, I mean, good for the Dolphins. They they weren't really able to get like a whole lot going in their running game at first. Um, so they really had to do it a lot through the passing game, get a chain evolved through the receiving, which was interesting to watch. They have such dynamic players. Like to it really just needs to get the guys the ball. Like get Tyreek the ball, get Waddle the ball, let them work, and they can do pretty much anything. So shout out Dolphins defense though. Shut them down in the second half. I don't know if it was Jaguars complacency or what, but they only threw like eight passes in the second half. And, you know, they just kind of let Miami come back. And Miami, Miami honestly thinks the better team. So eventually the better team won. I'll rate it mid to rain and see. It wasn't, wasn't awful, although it was close to awful. Not a game that I would watch again. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It, it was okay. Like, nice comeback from the Dolphins. Trevor Lawrence, is he any good? Don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I I've I've been on the Trevor Lawrence non hype train for a while, Back. but you know, Back. he will live still going twelve of twenty one because he only threw twenty one passes. All right, going to our next game: Colts versus Texans. I actually enjoyed this game, but we'll see what uh, let's see what you guys say. I enjoyed this game. I'm actually gonna go grab your popcorn here. I think the biggest thing here that really won the Texans a game here is just they control the ball. They had 40 minutes versus the Colts who had 20. Um, they, they were just able to control the ball, wind the clock down. Joe Mixon had a monster game, which is exciting for the Texans because last year that wasn't their strength. Um, they try to do it with Damian Pierce and he just, that's his name, right? Damian Pierce. <laughs> yeah. They try to do it with Damian Pierce and it just didn't work to get a guy with Joe Mixon. Huge. Um, they, they used stuff on digs nicely and you know, Guys like Nico Collins still balled out too. So I think CJ Stroud, you know, there was, was there going to be a sophomore slump? I don't think there is. I think he looks solid. But to give the Colts credit, I do think they are a very frisky team, just as I said at the beginning of the year. I think they're underrated. I mean, and they proved this in this game that they will be competitive. And I think almost every game they're going to be in. Um, so watch out for the Colts. They were my upset alert. They didn't do it, but I, they were close. They were close. So I'll, I'll, I'll give it that, but 
I agree with Hunter. I think it was a grab your popcorn. It was close throughout. You know, Anthony Richardson had some nice throws. CJ Stroud, yeah. two touchdowns to Stefan Diggs. I thought it was an exciting game overall. Yeah, this is a grab your popcorn type game. Um, 29-27, really close. Colts had one turnover. Um, and, you know, Anthony Richardson continues to, like, prove me wrong. I'll say it. I didn't have him high when he was drafted. In fact, I had him quite low. Yeah. And, you know, it, I was worried about his injuries prone stuff, which obviously last year came true. Hopefully yep. not. Hopefully won't this year. He is a pretty decently sized guy, though. You know, only I believe. Yeah. So only the one pick. Right. And two touchdowns. He looked great on the ground. You know, yeah. not a lot of passes thrown, but yeah, no. Richardson looked good. Stroud under the radar again, um, but th- this is not a sophomore slump. If this is a sophomore slump, then he's going to win MVP. Um, <laughs> yeah. He 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 got he he was kind of in the mix there at the end of the or the middle of the end of the year yep. for the MVP running, if we remember. Yeah, and it was full. It was fair. He deserved yeah. to be there. And uh, he could be again. The one thing with Richardson, though, I will say that, like, I still think he really needs to work on is, like, when he has a mental lapse, it's nothing, like, minor. Like, it's bad. Like, that pick was atrocious. Like, it was, like, to nowhere. And it was so forced. And so that's something I want him to, like, work on. Because, like, I believe when he threw that, I could be wrong on this, but I believe they were in field goal range. So, like, having that kind of shit, like, that could win you a game, like, 30 to 20, like 30 to 29. Like that's the shit like that loses you games. So like, I think he could improve on his IQ. I think he has all the athletic ability in the world. He can get balls places they need to be. Um, he missed Adonai Mitchell a few times too on some deep passes. And I think, um, you know, again, there's another time where they could improve on that. So he's got time. He really, we got to remember, like he hasn't played that much football. He's played like five games. <laughs> so. He looked um, good for five games. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. My knock coming out of college was that he turns the ball over too much. True. Right? And, True. you know, yes, he threw the one pick, but it was only the one pick. And for yep. this guy that's only played five games against Not the bad. Texans, he looked good. He looked yeah. good. I mean, and honestly, we should almost compare him to the rookies of this, this year. Yeah. True. Well, basically. True. He has had a year of NFL training, to be fair to the rookies of this year. He has been on an NFL roster, even if injured. So Yep. True. Very true. All right, our next game. The one that I should have seen coming when I did my predictions this last week. Patriots versus Bengals. Is it really week one if the Bengals don't lose? <laughs> Rate the game. Is it I'll go mid- oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Doug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like we'll it. Ahead. I like it. We have a disagreement. Uh, oh. I'm going to go Mediterranean Sea. And the reason being is that, like, you know, I understand the game was nothing flashy, like, at all. But it does remind me of, like, the old school Patriots Bengals games, you know, where we just see the Patriots run it 39 times. Yeah. And honestly, it kind of made me, reminded me of Bill Belichick, mm-hmm. uh, Patriots, a little bit, um, weirdly enough. Uh, Jacoby Brissett added some some little ground game, little action that maybe people didn't know he had. Uh, Ramondre, the pound, pound ground and pound running back. Um, Jamar Chase doing his thing. Joe Burrow, you know the. I'm a little say it. it this game, this game say is it. not like. This game I know you're thinking like it. Say it. it picture of like joe burrow like not being i think he's a little overrated okay i knew you're gonna say it and my point is is that like he got vaulted to the patrick mahomes level vaulted to the josh allen's level uh quarterbacks in the top of the nfl really quickly and people were like he is he is the next star of the nfl right and i don't know if he's there yet i don't know if he's that good yet I think this just is another game where it kind of proves that he's maybe more average 
at the moment. He didn't look bad. I don't want to say that Joe Burrow looked bad, but I, you know, when everybody talks about the top five quarterbacks in the league nowadays, Joe Burrow is often up there, especially, especially last year at the start of the year. Yeah. Especially two years ago. I mean, but I think it's time to start talking about the fact that is Joe Burrow really that good? Okay. Hayden, you anyway. said shit show. Why did you say shit yeah. show? Yeah. I mean, like Dodge said, I think it was pretty reminiscent of Bill Belichick, you know, kind of their football defensive grind you out kind of games. But this Bengals team, man, they suck in the first two weeks of the season every year. <laughs> like horrible. And Jamar Chase, you know, there's the – was he even going to play? He didn't practice all off season because he wants the bag. Yep. And then he gets out there, you know, six catches for 62 yards, pretty good. But he only had six targets. I'm yeah. sorry, he's – no, Noah T. Higgins, he should have got 12, 15 targets that game against the Patriots. And I think he was underused. The Bengals O-line continues to be horrible. Back. Very I mean, true. I don't want to discredit Burrow a lot because he has no time to throw the ball half the time. He's taking a lot of sacks. The run game, they're missing out on Mixon. Yeah. Uh, Brown did had three carries for 11. Moss had a tough game. Yeah. And even, you know, I expect the Bengals to win this game. Week one yeah. woes or not, I expect them to go out and dominate. And the Patriots, I didn't expect to get many wins this year. Ramondre Stevenson played awesome. He had a yeah, really good run game. Really good. And but it's just a game. It was, it was just I was like, really, the Bengals aren't going to win this game. They fumbled on the one yard line early. Yeah. It just wasn't that good of a game to me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm teetering on shit show. I'm going to go with Mediterranean though. I. It just wasn't a fun game to watch. Like this is not a game that I want to remember next year, like at all. It just I'm interested in what we talk about next game, but yeah. It's just yeah, I just like Cincinnati's O line made the Patriots defense look so good because they were just consistently getting to Joe Burrow on pressures over and over again. They might have only had three sacks, but like I don't think the stats tell the whole story there because like they were genuinely like getting to Joe Burrow consistently and Joe Burrow didn't look like himself really I would say until the second half I feel like it when they started clicking again it was too late uh, the Patriots were already in control um and you know Ramondre Stevenson he looked really good yesterday so I'll, I'll give him props there um well I don't I don't expect this Patriots team to do much if they do they do we'll see how the Bengals bounce back they play the Chiefs next week so they got to bring it Titans versus Bears. Blowout. Oh God, this is. <laughs> no, I'm interested. I'm interested. I, I, I have a question after uh, the, after we talk about this game. This was a Blowout. shit show. My <laughs> God, the, like the Bears had no business winning this game, like at all. But I think <laughs> they were down what 17-0. and they got a uh, blocked punt for a t- t- TD, a pick six. Um, it, it was awful. Like Caleb Williams did not play good at all. Um, and he was playing hero ball the entire game. There was one point I remember watching him basically run 15 yards backwards, trying to make a play out of nothing and him get sacked. I'm like, dude, this isn't USC. You're not going to get that ball off. Like it was awful. Like it, I hated watching it. And I, and that's what I worried about him when we were doing our draft stuff is plays like that. Cause he would do plays like that, but he would get away with it in college. Um, I hope he learns from it because I do think his ceiling is really high. But yeah, he's gotta he's gotta learn to get the ball out. To be honest, I became more worried about it at USC as it kept happening, and yeah. like it almost happened more and more, like yep. throughout his sophomore to junior to senior season, where he gets to this point of. I'm just going to do it myself and yep. chuck the ball down the field and hopefully someone gets a open little too arrogant. Game. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, it, it became worse and worse throughout his college career. Um, yeah, this was a shit show. Um, and this game was worse than the last game, in my opinion. Like yeah. I would rather watch the Patriots Bengals than I would the Titans Bears yeah. game. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's not. Yeah, I was interested to hear what you guys had to say between the two games. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Titans, Bengals, awful. 
Will Levis. I was going to say, terrible. Levis looked terrible, yeah. Um, yeah. The, <laughs> the receiving course of both of these mm-hmm. teams got better over the yep. offseason, and um, yet they looked mm-hmm. worse, right? Yeah. Like you got Ridley Boyd and, and D-Hop, nothing, right? Yeah. Um, you got DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Romo Dunze, yep. even Cole Komet, who had yeah. the one target. Um, I, both teams looked awful. <laughs> this was a, yeah, yeah I think, uh, the Titans coach coming out today and saying, you know, if we would have punted on first and 10 every series, we would have won that game. <laughs> it was probably the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Because that interception by Will Levis might be like a sixth grade quarterback just trying to chuck it out of bounds. And then I've never seen someone hit the surrender Cobra on the field (laughs) after throwing. (laughs) Can we, uh, like, that is a single handedly, you know, losing game. He lost the game. Yeah. Straight up. And, (laughs) right? The score's 24 17. It was a defensive battle the whole way. And you wouldn't even think it really that. (laughs) You'd be like, oh, it's a decent scoring game. Caleb Williams probably had a couple touchdown passes, you know, first oh, 98, <laughs> nope. 98 yards as a quarterback. Like, told Pollard, I don't know, the Titans, they were running the ball the first half when they were getting the lead. Yeah. Pollard looked good. Spears yeah. is a good one-two combo, say, and then they took it out of the running backs. And they let, I don't know why. Just try I don't know why. It? Yeah, oh, it's awful. Terrible. <laughs> Going to cards, Bills, which was very interesting game. <laughs> I think better than some people thought it was going to be, but uh, thoughts on this game? I don't know if this is a hot take, but I think this is a grab your popcorn. Yeah. I enjoyed this game a lot. You know, when I was watching, I was like, oh, uh-oh, the Bills are down like 17-3 yep. to three early. I yep. was like, oh, no. what? Like Josh Allen's trying to do everything, yep. and I think he was trying to settle into the new offense yep. that they were trying to run, and then you know they got it lead back in the second half and then all of a sudden the Cardinals were back up again and it was back and forth and it was exciting and the Bills could have put them away and the cards had a chance right at the end. It was yep. it was a pretty fun game, but you know, I think it shows that Josh Allen's gonna have to be that everything man. He had two yep. two rushing touchdowns, I think. Yep. And two rushing two passes. Yeah, I think you know, he give himself a case for an MVP if he's gonna have to carry this team like this this year this is it's fun to see it was good to see the cardinals have a good game after last year kyler murray didn't yeah. play horrible so but he did miss marvin harrison wide open for <laughs> yeah, a tutty yeah, yeah one one did. catch for four yards that yeah, was a little did. underwhelming but i don't know i'm excited to see what the cards can do that was a pretty good performance yeah i'll rate it a grab your popcorn too just because the performance by josh allen and you're right if josh allen plays like that um, he will be the MVP because it's like reminiscent of Cam Newton, except for better. Yeah. And not like no offense to Cam Newton, especially Cam Newton in his prime. Josh Allen just looks better. Money and like the receiving core. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure who Cam had for receiving other than like Steve Smith, I think was on that team, but yeah. And anyway, my point is, yeah. The defenses didn't look great, if I'm being honest. You had the two fumbles, one by each quarterback, right? And yep. honestly, both of, these, both, <laughs> both of these teams are so reliant on their quarterback doing everything for their offense yeah. that I almost don't fault them when they do something Bad. problematic, right? <laughs> um like even Kyler Murray, like he didn't push the ball down the field at all that game. Yeah. And but do I blame him? Not really. I mean, they got Marvin Harrison, so they actually did do something. Bills got Keon Coleman, but yeah, you know, it was a it was a decent game. Good, great performance by Josh Allen. <laughs> um, four touchdowns, yeah. one turnover. Yeah, I enjoyed this game. Uh, it was kind of uh, grab your popcorn for me. I think uh, it was kind of almost like panic for the Bills, and then to see Josh Allen be like, "All right, let's do this shit now." Like mm-hmm. it was, it was fun to see him kind of turn that mode on. Um, I know I had a guy on last Thursday or Friday, and he's like, "I think it's gonna be good for Josh Allen because like mm-hmm. he's got to he's got to step it up. Like he doesn't have anybody. He doesn't have the Stephon Diggs drama. He doesn't have anything. Like he." He's got to do it all now. And so I, I'm excited to see what Josh Allen does. And if it's anything like this all year, 
we're in for a treat in in terms of fans and watching because it, it was fun to watch. Um, you know, there was no receiver that really like stood out. I mean, Keon Coleman was the leading receiver, four receptions, fifty one yards, like nothing crazy, right? So it'll be interesting. I think James Cook is underrated at back. Um, you really you know, like he, had, he had a lot of carries. What's up? You really like him. I do You've like him. Really I think him. he's underrated. I think he's underrated. But uh, can we talk about this Cardinals team for a second? Too? Cardinals, like, Cardinals, like, yeah, and Cardinals are solid. Cardinals are better than people <laughs> are thinking. I think. NFC West <laughs> still <laughs> still kind of tough. All right, next game. Uh oh, what happened to Kirk? Doug, Steelers Falcons. <laughs> Uh, you know, first game, Lana, he's getting used to that soul food. Um, <laughs> no, I, it wasn't a good game. There's no other way to put it for Kirk. Um, I think he'll bounce back. I don't think it's going to be like a all season thing. I do think we can look at the receiving core for the Falcons and continue to say that they've been overrated since the very beginning. Like I've been saying, yeah. Drake I, London, I, two I, never, catches. I never thought Drake London was that good. I never thought Kyle Pitts was that good. Why? <laughs> Why did people be like, I swear on fantasy, we hear it all the time. Yeah. These guys are going to be really good for your fantasy teams. <laughs> They're awful every year. And it's not even for fantasy. It's just like regular. In general, play. Yeah. <laughs> they they don't get open that much. Yeah. I don't care how fast they run their 40. <laughs> I really don't, <laughs> you know, um, Kirk didn't look good either. So I can't blame it all on Pitts in London. Bijan looked good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, let's give Bijan his props, <laughs> right. You know, even though he only had 3.8 yards per carry, you know, Bijan still caught five catches for 43 yards, but 68 yards on the ground, classic Bijan things mm-hmm. fields. looked Okay. He ran well, but like we know Fields can do that. I still think the Steelers offense would look better under Wilson. So Russ, but we'll see. Um, you know, Tomlin said talk to him Tuesday about who's gonna be starting next week. And I think you know he wants to watch the film again. Pickens picked it up, yeah, I believe, in like the second half of that game. But yeah, I mean, this is what I expected from the Steelers. This is a Mike Tomlin type win. If we're talking about how coaches win, right? Defense wins games. Yeah. Oh, did I rate this game? Um, a shit show. Oh. Almost Mediterranean. Oh. Just debating it. Yeah. I think it's also a shit show. I think when your team wins with six field goals or you lose a game where the other team only gets six field goals, it's probably a shit show overall. But the Steelers defense, they are elite and – I think the Falcons will bounce back. I think Kirk will have a better game. It was nice to see uh, Bijan get 18 carries because that's something they went away with at the end of last year. It was nice to see Kyle Pitts actually get a touchdown, though. Right. So at least you know, we finally got one for all the fantasy fans that are like, this is your – at least they got him. He got him one. But feels look good running the ball. He didn't do that at all in Chicago last year, which was surprising. So it was good to see him get out a little bit more. Najee Harris is power back. I was surprised Warren didn't get mm-hmm. many carries in this game last year. They were splitting it almost seemed like with those two, but it was just, it's not a good game really. Overall. I think with fields that it, it's cut, cut into Warren's runs. Yeah. If I'm being honest. Yeah. I'm going to go Mediterranean because of TJ Watt. Yeah. TJ Watt. <laughs> It sucks because he should have had two strip sacks this game. <laughs> and both of them were called back because of flags. One because of him because he jumped off sides, which whatever. But the other one, I can't remember. I think it was like illegal hands to the face by a corner. So like completely out of the play, which sucks. But he was all over Kirk's ass. And like, pause. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... For Kirk to come off Achilles injury and have TJ Watt in his face is like a scary sight yeah. to see. And I mean, he might get defense player of the year again this year. I know he didn't get it last year, two years ago, I believe he got it. So he's looking like in his prime still. And I know it was against the Falcons, but God damn, we heard a lot of hype about the Falcons. So 
Steelers defense is solid and they're going to win them a lot of games. Justin Fields, he, he game managed, honestly, like he did enough to win, which is all the Steelers needs really. Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of Mike true. Tomlin's thing. So he didn't make that many mistakes. I think he had what one fumble. That's all you need. Really? Who do you so, start? Who do you start next week then? Fields or Russ? I don't think Fields did anything too special to like say he's a starter. In my opinion, I think you still go with Wilson. But if Wilson starts to struggle, I wouldn't feel like uncomfortable starting or putting Fields in. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like I, to me, it almost gives Mike Tomlin assurance. Like, oh, we're gonna be fine if Wilson goes down. If something goes wrong with Wilson, right? Like he can at least manage the game. So, and here's the thing for Russ as well. Um, I think if he even has a season like that first season with the Broncos, yeah, the Steelers will still win games. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And if he has a season like he had last season with the Broncos, the Steelers oh, are going to win a lot of games. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. We'll see. Definitely. Definitely. I think people also forget, like, they've had, like, Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph and still won games. So I think this that. team's just fine. Like, yeah. all right, going to our next game. Seahawks Broncos. This was a shit show for so many reasons. <laughs> but Dodd, since you won, I'll let you talk first. This is a this is a Mediterranean Sea game. Ah, uh, no business. You <laughs> don't not pull. This is an atrocious <laughs> game. This is so bad. <laughs> it's a Mediterranean Sea. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, some very sloppy football played. Um, classic week one game. There's two safeties in this game, bro. <laughs> there was a fucking holding call in the fucking end zone, and they had to call it a safety. <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> Seahawks won, so it's Mediterranean. Um, and uh, I, w- I wouldn't even talk about that. I mean, look at how many turnovers were there in this game. How many? Next through two, five. Takes. There was five. One turnovers. on the one yard line, which is fucking <laughs> awesome. Um, no, it was a really poorly played game from both teams, and normally I wouldn't rate this uh, a shit show, but the Seahawks beat the Broncos, <laughs> and on this podcast, we all know what that means. Sorry to rub it in. <laughs> anyway, I'm not that sorry. Kaden, uh, oh, Kenneth Walker it. looked great. <laughs> Tyler Lockett did Tyler Lockett things. Tyler Lockett had a good game. I won't even talk about the Broncos is it, for you. The, is it bad that I almost want to rate this or grab your popcorn in the first half? Because <laughs> it was so bad that I was enjoying was what I was yeah. watching. I was, and I don't think I've ever seen two safeties in a half of football. Like, yeah. Wow. And I don't know what was happening. And, you know, Broncos defense looks solid. Yeah. For the first half. I was going to say first my, half, yeah. My my bingo card to start the game with two safeties and a Geno Smith 40-yard rushing touchdown, that wouldn't have been on there. <laughs> but yeah. I, was, I was just like, what, what the hell am I watching? This is atrociously funny. Yeah. Uh, but it was a shit show, but it was also an entertaining shit show, to say yeah. the least. And Seahawks got to clean a lot of things up, I think. Metcalf only had two ca- three catches. JSN only had two catches, so... You know, they're one and three receivers weren't really involved too much. We always Gino, do that, though. Yeah. Gino had a little – looked off, but I don't know. It, I can't discredit the Broncos either. It's Bo Nick's first game. Yeah. You know, he's used to having fast receivers on, on Oregon, and then you go to the Broncos receiving core, and you really only have limited options. Broncos offense averaged 3.3 yards per play. Not good, if you guys were wondering. That's not good. That's like, yeah. Uh, it was it was a shit show. It was so much was happening. There was two safeties, like you said. There was a Bo Nix drive that looked promising, and then he threw a pick at the one-yard line, which was just like the cherry on top. Um, the first half, our defense looked solid. I was like, okay, I have something to look forward to. But during this game, it like dawned on me that we have an issue that we've had an issue for like the last five years 
is we don't have fucking weapons. He has nobody to throw to. Um, he threw the ball. He targeted Cortland Sutton 12 times, and he caught four of them. Um, not good. Our leading reception was Devon Vele. Do you, either of you no. know of him before this game? I still nah. don't know. Yeah, ex- exactly. Exactly. So the the moral of this is that we need to provide our team with weapons, but we are currently paying somebody $80 million <laughs> to be hurt on the Steelers. So there are issues with this team systematically. But, no, I think there's some highlights uh, from a fan perspective. I think our defense ran out of gas, but when they are at their, like, prime, like, the young guys stepped up. Like, they – there's some good studs on that team, um, which I'm excited for because I think that was like my biggest mystery with this team. So that, that'll be interesting. It'll keep us competitive for sure. The Seahawks made some adjustments at half, started running the ball a lot. We did not respond well. Kenneth Walker looked very good in this game. Geno Smith started to turn on the Jets a little bit from time to time. Um, he, he threw some good good balls to Tyreek Hill and or not Tyreek Hill, <laughs> Tyler Lockett. So yeah, I mean Seahawks got it done in the end, but yeah, it was a shit show. All right. Going to our Friday night game in Brazil. Yep. Eagles Packers. Oh you know, like looking at the score, I think a lot of people would probably be like, oh this is a grab your popcorn game. Mm-hmm. I thought it was kind of a Mediterranean <laughs> game for a primetime game. Like I was expecting like fireworks, but there were so many turnovers by Jalen Hurts. <laughs> like shout out to the Eagles defense cuz if it wasn't for the Eagles defense, they would not have won this game like at all. Like it was like he put them their defense in so many bad situations and the amount of times it felt like the Eagles defense just held them to a field goal was like kind of impressive cuz he put them at like the 20 yard line or like, like I was like, Jesus Christ, dude. But, um, (laughs) I mean, Hertz is just so up and down. Like he's so inconsistent from drive to drive. It's, it's hard. Cause like, I want to root for him, but it's so hard as a team to be successful when you're consistent. Like what do you, did he have three or four turnovers this game? Three. When you, when you have three turnovers, it's hard to win a game. One, Especially when you put them in good field position, too. Um, so I he's got to clean that up. He's got weapons. Um, Seagulls defense is legit. Saquon's fucking legit. He had a monster mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. Eagles need to be excited about that. He had three touchdowns. I mean, if Jalen Hurts can get his head on straight, this team is scary. Like, people need to watch out for this team because the Eagles are scary if he can get it together but saquon is the guy you need to watch out saquon for. Is him. yeah and jordan love how long three to eight weeks possibly yeah it's not good for the packers because malik willis what the fuck happened at that game man? that was terrible <laughs> he couldn't even throw a comeback yeah. out <laughs> bro He's he, he's not it, you know. <laughs> I heard Bailey Zappi might be coming to uh, okay. the Packers. Mm-hmm. Okay. I need Joe, I need Joe Flacco, <laughs> then it, then Jason Jacob Eason. Send Jacob Eason back out there. What do you guys rate it? Oh, I was I was agreeing with you. I was thinking Mediterranean. Um, we got to stop having games in other countries when we can't get a field that can su- support the players. Dude, that, that was, was mis- so We had a ref bad. taken out. The, they're slipping all over the place. Why are they we sending two? First play. <laughs> yeah. Slip. Uh, why are we sending two teams that wear the color green to Brazil when green gets you beat up in yep. the streets? What do, NFL did not yeah. do their case study on this one very well. No. And then they're sending the, the Giants and the Panthers to Germany later in the year. So. Have fun, fans in Germany. Good job, NFL. Really good foreign <laughs> games this year. But um, ATE is speaking yeah. loud. Yeah, I think the Giants right now are in a lot of pain because of what Saquon did this game. He looked yeah. awesome. 
Uh, hot take. I think Saquon will finish with more offensive touchdowns than the whole Giants team will this season. I don't think that's a hot think, take. No, I think <laughs> that's. I think he's dual. I think Saquon's due for a huge year. Uh, Jalen Hurts. I don't know about that. I <laughs> like. I like to see the odds on that one. He's up. He's up three like, zero right yeah, now. It's, like, <laughs> it's a good start. We should track it on this. Podcast. Honestly, yeah. I bet you Saquon, Saquon versus the Giants. I bet you Daniel Jones has more turnovers than Saquon. We'll have touchdowns. Yeah. Wait, no. I gotta think about this. Is that good or bad? No, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah. bad. Unless he's having like fifteen to twenty. Eh, he could. Yeah. Anyway, I think, yeah. I think Jalen Hurts is lucky he didn't throw five interceptions this game. A couple nice. hit the Packers right in the chest in the second yep. half and got got lucky that AJ Brown punched that one out. Otherwise, yep. that might have gone for six. Yeah. To be honest, yeah, AJ Brown one was kind of yeah. Yeah. And then, there's some there's some OPI happening yeah, to make sure that there's no with, picks. Yep, yep. Yep. I think uh yeah, like you said, the Eagles are lucky they didn't go down fourteen nothing to start that game. Packers were shot themselves in the foot a little bit too, a couple holding calls, get them out of yeah. the red zone, get some field goals. It sucks, you know, losing Jordan Love right at the end there, especially when they push the ball to midfield with a couple chances to get down the field a little bit more. Jalen Reed looked really good for the Packers. Yeah, that guy is yeah, fast. Yeah, he's, he's good. quick. So that was a weapon. It was yeah. I don't know the who's who's the running back now. Oh my God. Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. Yeah, yeah. Tough first half, but he really turned it on the second half. Yeah, first half did not look good. Yeah, that's classic but, Josh Jacobs. Yeah, though, by the way, yeah. he, he he's a bruiser. He wears him down. down. Yep, and then it's just it was okay. I think the Packers are they need a new quarterback. Though, like we said, going forward for these next couple of weeks, till he's got to sustain the ship. Until Jordan Love can come back, I think they'll be fine. I think if yep. they can go, you know, if Jordan Love's out four to six weeks, they can go 500. They can still have a chance to push for a playoff spot at the end of the season. Yeah. But I think for them, it's just finding a way, win a couple here in the next couple of weeks. Honestly, I don't even think they have to go 500 while he's out. I think this Packers team looked good. Yeah. Better than I thought they would. I, I it's kind of weird to say because the Eagles put up 34 points, but I thought the Packers defense looked good for a majority of the game. Yeah, it, I, I know that's odd for me to say, but you know, like you look at it and you say, like they only allowed 3.8 yards per rush to the Eagles. Yeah, to me, the Packers look solid. Um, I don't know why they, they should have kept running the football. They were averaging 7.8 yards per carry, and Jaden Reed, absolute stud. I've been saying that for a long time now he is the Packers future uh receiving leader and uh, you know I don't know <clears throat> because people you know when Dubs and who was uh, who else was there last year was Lazard Christian, still there well Christian, Christian Watson, Watson. So, yeah and it's it's there. Reed Jaden Reed's the better player at between all all of them Josh Jacobs had Josh Jacobs game. Thought Jordan Love looked good besides his sprained MCL. So yeah. Did I rate this game mid terranian C? Yeah. So okay. I keep forgetting to do that. All right. Last game. Ravens Chiefs started it off all this week one. What do we rate it? Mid terranian C. Ooh. <laughs> uh I thought about grabbing your popcorn, but to me, to be honest with you, this was all this is I was exp- I don't know what I was expecting. I was feeling like this is gonna be a banger. Yeah. And it was it was like a decent regular season game. Yeah, you know, solid. Um, and that's why it's a mid-terrain C. You know, obviously, anytime Lamar and Mahomes get together and play, it's fun to watch. Um, I thought this—I thought this game was a good game to watch. Lamar looked solid, yeah, really solid, especially on the ground, um, which we all knew. Derrick Henry got less carries than I expected, but they were kind of stacking the box against him. Um, yeah. Now he's a big man and he can find the end zone. So 
Can you stop them? Mm -hmm. Isaiah likely was a major factor that I did not expect. Yeah. And uh, Rishi Rice, Xavier Worthy, big games. Yep. I, I Honestly, this might be the uh, Kelsey goodbye. Still this want him? might be – <laughs> Cole Komet only had me one catch for four yards. Yeah. So – I think Kelsey would get more than that, but <laughs> my whole point here is that uh, I, you know, with that first game with Rishi Rice and Savior Worthy looking like that, you can start to shift the offense away from Travis Kelsey, which will actually open them up more as you get to the postseason. Yeah. Chiefs are still dangerous. Mm -hmm. Chiefs could go win another Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Big surprise. I agree with Dodge. That was mid terranian and. The Ravens, they came out that first drive. You know, they got a tutty. They looked good doing it. Mm -hmm. Derrick Henry was running solid. And then their play calling from, like, the mid of the first to almost the end of the third yeah, was atrocious, weird. in my opinion. Lamar was throwing screens every single play when he was That's throwing. Right. It, was, yeah, it was, like, so. everything was less than five yards. Was, yeah. Didn't understand the scheme, like, what they were trying to do. And they, they were missed receivers were missing blocks like that fourth down they went for miscommunication Aguilar missed the block it would have been a first down and then instead she's take over at midfield yeah Isaiah likely had a great game but the, Mark Andrews basically turned into an extra blocker all game which surprised <laughs> me so like like what so I don't know like all these yeah what do we I didn't, I didn't understand the Ravens game plan and then in the fourth quarter when they were losing and they had to push the ball they looked good when they were throwing it, you know, yep. 10, 15 ball. And Lamar was scrambling. They were getting out of the pocket a little bit. They looked a lot better, but it was just like a little bit too late. And then end of the game, Lamar missed two throws. I don't, I know the Zay Flower ones was pretty bad. He was wide open, but he was scrambling away from Chris Jones. I kind of understand that missed throw, but I feel like the Isaiah likely in the corner of the end zone was a, a worse missed throw in my opinion. He sailed yeah. it, he, you know, pinned it right in the back, and then just unfortunate that he was half a toe away from – they would have went for two, so it yeah. been a crazy finish. And yeah. we got to get Chris Collinsworth off Chiefs games. I can't anymore, bro. The <laughs> <laughs> home glazer. <laughs> yeah, this Chiefs it. glazer. They, they, yeah. Oh, my God. They, they, uh, he was wanting Xavier yeah, Worthy to get they the said, ball. Uh, he said Patrick Mahomes <laughs> – like 108 times is what someone <laughs> calculated through the oh broadcast. And another point I want the flag. About Andy Reid. Oh my God, the flag. It was that was, that was one of the worst penalty calls. I was like, all right, new NFL season, maybe Russell tone it down this year. Up oh, and there's the fifth flag in a row. Chris play, Collinsworth but, loved to point uh, that out. Yeah, they're uh, really trying to make a point of this here. Yeah. Yeah. Like five illegal formations on the Ravens when they're lined up the exact same as the Chiefs were. Um, <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go against the grain. I'm gonna go grab your popcorn because yeah. I think it was the most fun finish of all the games we had this week. Mm -hmm. Um, like especially to start the yeah. week like that. Like I think it was the most fun <clears throat> finish. Um, you have the drama of Lamar missing the freaking. The first throw, which to your point, he was getting chased down by Chris Jones. So you can say it was a bad throw or not, whatever you agree. And then you have like the replay with Isaiah Likely. Everyone thinks it's in at first and then they clearly see his toe out. It's I, I thought it was a fun finish. Um, I thought it was a good way to start the season. I really like your take on Zay Flowers, though. Like they kept trying to force screens to Zay Flowers and I didn't get it because it felt like he was going nowhere. Like he was one of those guys where like he kept getting the ball. And like when you're playing fantasy in my head, I'm like, fuck, this guy's getting so many fantasy points against me right now. They're like fucking nine points because he wasn't going anywhere with it. And I think John Harbaugh, I don't know if it's John Harbaugh or their O coordinator who calls plays, but like they get in their head when they play big teams. Like they did the exact same shit last year when they played in the AFC championship game. Like they don't play like themselves. Like, they start get pulling out like the tricks and the like just play like your fucking selves. Like that's that's what got you there. That first drive to your point, they looked really good, drove up down the field. Like, yeah, they need to stick to who they are. Like, that's 
that's what makes this team scary. Like when they try to do like the screens and the weird play calling, I'm like, why? Like this team's identity should be read option Henry Jackson. Yes, that people were. <laughs> and that's what it that. was first like, drive. That's what it yes. was first drive. Yeah. Yes, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, I was a little surprised Justice Hill was as involved as he was in the passing game, especially. Um, he would he was out there a lot. He might not have gotten the carries. Um, but he got a lot of receptions actually, so that was interesting to me. I'm curious to see if that keeps up. I think um, it's going to because they yeah. still don't have the receiving core to yeah pick up for it. Yeah, but Isaiah Likely, man, that his touchdown was ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. I remember watching him be like, yes. he scored? <laughs> How did yeah. You score? yeah, so no, it was, I thought it was a fun game overall, but all right, we're running out of time. Well, kind of. Um, so let's go to our final awards of the night. Your MVP for the week, player, as well as your team. That's, uh, fuck. I'm torn on my MVP because Josh Allen was him, like we said earlier. But I think I'm going to go with Baker for my nice. week one MVP. I, it's awesome to see. It's, like we said, it's just another fuck you to the NFL. Here's four tuggies. Only missed six passes. He was he was that guy in week one, and it's awesome to see Baker. It's hard to root against a guy like that. Yeah. So, and mm, team one's tough because I kind of want to give it to Patriots for upsetting the Bengals because I didn't think they should have won it. Ooh. But I think yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna do it. Good for the Patriots. I didn't see them winning it all, and they did it. Yeah. Thoughts. Uh, my MVP of the week is Saquon Barkley. Ooh. And you'd think I would say Josh Allen too, because he's on my fantasy team, <laughs> but that team lost. So Saquon Barkley, also on my fantasy team. And uh, yeah, no, three touchdowns. First game with the Eagles. Looking that good. Um, he's a difference maker for that team. He, he, I mean, he changes that team. That team's built around him now. <laughs> right so yeah mvp and <sighs> just give it to the saints 47 to 10 and, <laughs> <laughs> they played the panthers i get it awful but you know i thought the saints sucked too i'm still not a Derek Carr <laughs> fan <laughs> so congrats the saints this you'll get one mvp of the week never again I'm probably this will probably be my only MVP, and I'm gonna do it just because it's gonna piss off Dodge. I'm gonna give it to Sam Darnold. <laughs> yes, <laughs> bro, he went 12 for 12, Stop 13 it. for 13, Stop something it. like that. I know it's the Giants, it. but look, the man has very ever few positive. I don't even like Sam Darnold. I don't know why I'm like <laughs> hyping him up so much. I don't know why I'm giving him a little cock cock gluck gluck 2000. I don't know why I'm doing that right now, but like. I'm proud of him. Like I, I genuinely did not think this man had it in him. I thought it was washed. I thought the Vikings were screwed. I know it's the Giants, like I said, but he looks the good, Giants. man. I'm giving him the MVP for the week. Uh, for team, hmm, definitely not the yeah, Broncos. Who to give it to, baby? Yeah, who to um, give it to? <laughs> I'll give it to the. Um, I'll give it to the Bucks. They were they looked really dominant, and that Commanders team I think is friskier than people think. So I'm gonna give it the Bucks. Um. Yeah, that's my team of the week. Um, wh- who's on the hot seat for you guys? Last question uh, of the night. Well, Deshaun Watson should be on the hot seat. Yep. As a player, if we're doing players, it, Bryce anyone. Young. It could yeah. be coach or I don't player. Know. There's Tough there's a lot of shitty quarterback play. Bryce Daniel Young Jones. slash Will Levis slash Daniel Jones slash. <laughs> you got to pick Bengals, one. Bengals Your biggest coach. hot seat. Who's on the hottest seat right now? Daniel Jones. They've got two. Uh, yeah, who's their backups? Who's their backups? Drew they Lock. still have Horace Cock Lock, baby. Dimes. They have Danny Horse Dimes still. Lock. <laughs> no, they have they have Lock and they have uh, they have Devito what's still, right? Or they cut Devito. him? No, I think they still have Devito. Yeah, okay. yeah they. I'd do. give that much. They do because I remember Lock oh. was talking about how he was getting booed because they wanted Devito in. <laughs> All right, I'll go. I'll go Bryce Young. Is I think yeah. it's over. Is uh, yeah. so shitty. 
Dodd, you go and Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones. My hot seat for this week, the hot the hottest seat is Deshaun Watson. Because not only did he play like absolute dog shit, but he also got fucking sued again. So <laughs> perfect. He is on the hottest seat for the week. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not subscribed yet, I don't know what the fuck you're doing at an hour and twenty seven seconds or twenty seven minutes. So um but boys, appreciate you hopping on. I know it's late, so I appreciate it. Yep. Thanks for having us, Hunter. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always road to 1K. Get him there. Road to 1K. Let's do it.